Welcome to the Baseball Together podcast, baseball family. For those of you new to the show, we are here to raise money for the nonprofit organization Called Up, whose mission is to give disadvantaged young ball players the equipment they need to play the game we all love. We also want to unite communities by improving or rebuilding baseball facilities in areas suffering economic or environmental hardship. At this time, you can support by purchasing t-shirts and other baseball-related apparel and accessories from 9plusus.com. 10% of all these sales go to the cause. Again, that's 9plusus.com. The number 9, P-L-U-S-U-S, dot com. 9plusus.com. We hope you enjoy this episode of the Baseball Together podcast brought to you by 9plusus. Welcome to the Baseball Together Podcast, Baseball Family. I am Brad, and I am joined, as always, by Brig. What is up, Baseball Family? And we are excited to be with you this week. We're always excited to be with you, let's be honest. True. Um, but we've got some fun stuff to go through this week for uh, for current events, so let's go ahead and get right into these, uh, these baseball current events. Uh, the first one I wanted to go into here, uh, we had Ronald Acuna Jr., with the Atlanta Braves, got benched on Sunday. As I like to say, his lunch was canceled due to lack of hustle. Yeah. Like on heavyweights. <laughs> Thank you, Ben Stiller, for that. Thank you every um, day for that. <laughs> so, for anyone who didn't see, what happened was uh, Acuna hit a big fly ball to right field. He thought it was out. So he was kind of walking to first base, holding his bat up, and just doing – walking like i'm not exaggerating at all walking it was barely a walk yeah strutting more like uh and then the ball hit off the wall it didn't clear it hit off the wall and then he ended up with just the world's longest single (laughs) uh should have been on second base and ended up not scoring in that inning um and then he ended up getting benched for lack of hustle uh brig are you okay with a guy of Acuna stature getting benched for lack of hustle. Absolutely every day. Yeah, every day. Yep, every day. Every single flipping day. In every circumstance. Every single time. Okay, how about this? Ground ball to second base. If he doesn't run that out, are you benching him? Yes. Really? Yes. Because... See, and this is my thing is like he should have been standing on second base there. Like I, I'd be benching the guy in this case because if there is any inkling that that ball might not be going out, he should be running and going to second base, right? Yep, for sure. That that is at least a double on that ball because if it hits the wall and deflects far enough, he's got the speed. He should be on third. Could be at home. Totally. Could be getting inside the park home run. However, if there's a guy who is, I mean, he does, He can be a speed guy. He doesn't have to be um, like a Billy Hamilton or a D. Gordon type. Um, but he can be a fast guy or anybody less than that. Like they used to tell Nelson Cruz all the time in Seattle, if you hit a ground ball in the infield, you don't need to leg that out. You don't need to run it out. There's no sense in pulling a hammy and then missing time because you're trying to leg out an infield hit that you're not going to beat out, right? Sure. So I'm fine if Acuna hits a ball even to shorts, like a routine ground ball to shortstop, and once the ball is fielded and the exchange is made, he lets up. I'm fine with that. Like last year in the in the World Series, people were killing Machado for lack of hustle, quote unquote. Yep. And I'm just like, that was a situation where it's like he's not a guy who's gonna beat that out. Pick your spots. You know. Does it change for you if it's postseason or regular season? Uh, no, it doesn't. Um. Because I feel like guys know situationally, right? Like you can tell when there's a throw made. And let me say this. Run till the ball is thrown, right? Because there can be a, there can be a bobble on an exchange even. There can be somebody can bring the ball back. You see catchers all the time. They go back to cock to throw and the ball flies out the back, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see that happen all the time. Especially, like I said, with catchers, you can that can happen with a shortstop or a third baseman. And if you're still running, then you can beat that out. You know, once the ball is thrown, though, if you don't stand a chance, 
I don't care if you let up because, like I said, there's no sense of pulling a hammy and missing time if you're not going to beat it. Um, I think that's why when we see on TV, when we see guys, there it looks like they're jogging into first base when the ball gets there. Yeah. It's because they're they're basically conceding the defeat of throw, yeah, bat, right? Yeah. For sure. Yeah, like we're ju- we're just seeing the conceding. We're not seeing that they've that they've run as hard as they can to the throw. Thirty feet. And then yeah. once, yeah, and then once that throw is made, then they're just conceding and they're just running out just for the sake of that's what you do. Right. right. And that being said, I do feel like guys need to run through. You need you need to run your you need to to run your repetition of the ninety feet. You know. See, I my argument would be run until the ball is caught. That's my opinion. But, yeah, in, I mean, in that's case old, it's not caught. Sport. Yeah, because just as often as the ball flying out of the catcher's hand when he cocks back to throw, uh, you see a bobble catch at first base, or his guy throws it on a short hop, and the guy in the first baseman can't feel it cleanly. I say run it out until it's caught. Once it's caught, you can slow down. And that happens all the time, right? You take yeah, that same yeah. scenario, routine ground ball, second base, or shortstop, you know, and the guy makes a clean exchange, clean field, clean exchange, clean throw, everything's fine. Um, and then it gets caught and you get beat halfway to first base. I mean, so run it out till it's caught. You never know. And that's the thing I love about baseball is you just don't ever know. Yeah. So when guys like Acuna in this case, and I won't generalize and say he's like this all the time, but in this case, when a guy like Acuna um, takes a peek and and he's, you know, loafing or less than loafing he was dragging that back foot the whole way you know he was lollygagging dude wasn't even there it was like he brain fell apart or something and he ran um he ran right into the dugout <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what i mean yeah and so i think that's what i think i also think that that that, that if you want to play the circumstance game that's fine mm-hmm. if you're on the pittsburgh pirates or the cincinnati reds or whatever and it is late august and you don't want to haul butt to first base? Fine. I don't care. Neither do they, right? Nobody yeah. cares. But if you're on a contender team, and if your win percentage still matters really bad, right? It really matters right now, especially in Atlanta. Um, and you're not legging it out to first base, and you don't have that will to win, I think that's exactly the right situation. You put that kid on the bench, and you make him understand, and the put send a message to the whole team like this is unacceptable level of of uh, discipline, right? This is not this is not how we're going to win a championship, and I think they caught this problem at just the right time in the season. Mm-hmm. It's just early enough to send that message, and I think the guy did the right. The manager made the right call every day. Yeah, and the Braves manager Brian Snicker, he said that Acuna, he said that he handled it like a professional, that he accepted what he what he had done, that he he took the punishment and yeah. was okay with it. You know that. He accepted that, you know, I, I didn't hustle. I didn't, I didn't leg it out like I should have. And, and he took it like a man, basically, yeah. uh, which I thought was cool, which I thought was big of him. And hopefully we won't see this from him again because he's a great young ball player. There's a lot of fantastic years ahead of him. Dude, it's so much fun to watch. Yeah, he's excellent. He's an amazing ball player. He is. Um, and I, this, this is something that I would hate to see him develop this young and turn into like a Manny Ramirez type, you know, oh, Manny being Manny, but there's a lot of this yeah. in Manny Ramirez's career. Yep. And I would hate to see a young kid like this develop into that. I agree, man. I think there, I don't yeah. think there's any place for it anyway, but yeah, if the ball's caught, slow down. That's yeah. That's it though. All right. Well, let's move on to the next, the next item on our docket here. We have, there's been some talk uh, about a mercy rule, Brig. Your yeah. guy Aaron Boone wants a mercy rule. Yeah, what's that about? Oh, he just thinks that it's unnecessary to risk injury and strain, and uh, specifically putting position players on the mound in the mm-hmm. event of a complete blowout. We're talking, you know, nineteen to two kind of type games, right? Yeah. Um, he doesn't want to put himself or his team in a position of having a position player take the mound, which is what has happened a couple of times in New York this season. Well, it's happened across the league. league. I yeah, feel like everywhere more this year. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, you know, but Aaron Boone, he's vocal. Everybody knows uh, when he has an opinion, he'll he'll tell you. 
Oh, yeah. So I think he's getting a lot of press about it, but I don't think he's alone. I think a lot of managers would agree that a mercy rule should be instated or um, or could be valuable. What do you think? I think, I mean, I see where he's coming from, from that aspect of um, saving pitchers' arms because there's a lot of emphasis on that, um, putting position players at risk by putting them on the mound because, I mean, there's a reason I got to a point where I was like, I stopped asking to pitch when I got older. Yeah, I was like, you kidding me? I don't want to. I'm fine being behind the batter with all that gear, but I don't want to be in front of him without any. Right. You know, like put me a little bit farther back and I'm all right. But no, that's way too close to be standing, be standing there just basically defenseless, you know? Yeah. Um, so I understand that aspect of it, but baseball is the one sport you can't do it with. Right. Like, and I know 19 to two, 20 to two, whatever is, it feels insurmountable, but technically it isn't. Yeah. You're absolutely There's no right clock. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen, especially if you get a position player out there. Like you see these guys out here who have a hard time hitting these position players because they're throwing junk. Yep. Because they don't. I mean, there's a reason they're position players and not pitchers. But they're out there basically throwing junk, so the hitters can't hit what they have. But if there was a position player throwing for a team who was up 17 runs, and you had a team really motivated to come back and win, I bet they could do it. I bet they'd sit back on that junk and crush it and then force that winning team you know say it's the yankees up against the orioles you know <laughs> the the classic example we have from the season of i don't know just trash versus mighty i don't know how to i don't know how to describe it <laughs> <laughs> there goes uh, there goes blackjack brad again defending everybody in Birdland. <laughs> but um <laughs> If you were to, you know, use that example, say the Yankees are up on the Orioles 20 to 2, and then the Yankees go out there and they throw Brett Gardner, you know, and then the Orioles are like, no, we're not going to get embarrassed. We're going to come back. We're going to try to win this game. If those Orioles players decided to sit back on that on that junk that Gardner was throwing yeah. and then get into the bullpen eventually, you never know what's going to happen because if baseball momentum is a real thing. It right? is. It is tangible, yes. I feel like it is more tangible in baseball than it is in any other sport. And if you give any if you get a team that has any kind of confidence and they get rolling they'll come back and win yeah and because there's no clock you never know when it's going to happen so i don't feel like you can do that and one argument i did hear today when i was listening to a radio show i don't remember what it was everybody's filling in everybody's out of town right now um but somebody made a point they said if you're not within 10 runs after like three hours or something like that then you can call it, I guess. Like, that's the closest thing that would make sense to a mercy rule, you know? Mm. It's a three-hour game. It's it's ten or more runs, then call it. But I still don't think that's going to work because uh, if you're scoring ten runs, it's going to take a long time to get there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you do set a timer, but... You gotta get. You gotta give them a chance to come back. That's part of baseball. That's yeah. just the way it is. I agree. I'm not a fan of the idea of a mercy rule, but I am a fan of of uh, you know coming up with another solution to put more guys in a position to win. And I, this mm-hmm. is stuff we've talked about before when with like commissioner level rules. But yeah. I think there should be a, an expanded roster. Uh, that was my next thought. Yeah. Yeah. That would solve one of these problems. And there's, you know, there's things like that you can do to uh, mitigate these concerns and give everybody a chance to come back, you know? Yeah. An expanded roster is something I thought of, you know, maybe expand the roster to 30 guys so you can get a couple more guys out in the bullpen. Um, because I'm pretty sure that's what teams would do, right? Yeah. You don't, nobody really cares about who's on the, on the bench to, to pinch run. Everybody wants more, more, more depth in the bullpen. Everybody. Right? So, so I'm pretty sure that's what they would do is they would say, well, yeah, that's five more arms in the bullpen. That's awesome. Let's get some more bench. Let's get some more chairs out there. Great. Wow. Fantastic. That would be incredible. Uh, <laughs> that would be, you know, what would happen if you put five more bench or five more guys in the bullpen is you'd have, uh, you'd have one pitcher every inning. A new pitcher every inning. Oh, you would, yeah, and that so, would slow down the game. That would suck 
So yeah. I so maybe if we expand the roster, what we do is we allocate certain slots, and mm-hmm. you know we put a number on it. You can't you can't only have this many in the bullpen. Everybody mm-hmm. else got to be a position player. That would be cool. Yeah, I like that. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that way uh, you're not as likely to run out of pitchers in a blowout. I still feel like they're they're going to have to go to position players because they're going to want to save those arms for the next day or whatever. Right. You know, so I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like we're ever going to be able to get away from position players pitching. It's just going to be the way that it is. And yeah. I think that's just something that Aaron Boone and other managers are just going to have to accept because that's just the way it is. Uh, I think so. And that's one of the beauties of baseball is that it's yeah. technically positionless. Yeah, you can put anybody anywhere. True. Yep. So. I love that about baseball. Me too. So let's talk about Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, I really that like dude. this guy, and he did something awesome. Go ahead. No, just that dude's amazing is what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, he is amazing. Um, So, on Tuesday night, he passed Sandy Koufax as the all-time wins leader uh, for the LA Dodgers. So, that, so, he's got 166 wins, 166 career wins. Yeah, he's in his crazy. 12th year. And the thing that I want to know, I mean, he, he's been a fantastic regular season pitcher. Um, is he locked for the Hall of Fame break? Not at this point. Um, I think he's close, though. Mm-hmm. And I think that popularity is going to take him a long way as well in the voting. But for me, if we're hanging our hat on his wins, um then I say no. And not that he won't be a Hall of Famer. I'm sure he will be. But if we're saying, is he Hall of Famer right now? No, Mm -hmm. because wins is such a fickle statistic. Um, I I actually hate that statistic. Mm -hmm. Uh, It has so much, it has so little to do with what the pitcher actually controls. Well, I mean, you think about this, Felix Hernandez is going to be a a Hall of Famer, most likely. Yeah. And he's never pitched in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, that, there's your argument right there for how bad of a stat wins is. Yeah. And he even won a Cy Young with like 12, with like 12 wins one season. Right, and deservedly so. Yes. Yeah, he wasn't, it wasn't even close the year that he won. Yeah. yeah he, he was so, a deserving guy. Well, I mean, what do you think? Does Clayton Kershaw go to the Hall? Um, I think he right now he's borderline, which is funny to say because I'm, I've got his his baseball reference page right here in front of me. He is a, a three time Cy Young Award winner, one time MVP, eight time All Star, including this year. The problem that I have with him is his postseason numbers. Yeah, that everybody has that problem. Yeah, that sometimes teams can win in spite of bad pitching. But the problem is, is that they've lost, they've lost series because of him sometimes is that they, they put him in because they need his stuff. Right. Yeah. To go in there and close it out, but he can't do it. I mean, we just talked about how we don't like wins and losses, but he's, I mean, he's a career 500 pitcher in, in the postseason. Um, He's, uh, he's got a, 4.3 4.3 ERA in the postseason. Um, he's he's not good. He hasn't been good in the postseason. I do think yeah. though this year is the year that he can. I mean, I've kind of I've got my fingers crossed as I'm saying this. Mm. I'm hoping this is the year that he breaks through and, and plays really well in the postseason. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see him play well in, in a deep playoff run for the Dodgers. Do well. In, in a World Series, and even if the Dodgers don't win, I want it to be, you know, Clayton Kershaw did everything he could to get them where he needed them to be. And and I think if he puts together a good postseason, that, that'll be it. I mean, that'll be first, first ballot, Hall of Fame, that's it right there. That after pitching so horribly in the postseason, I think he just needs one good postseason run, and that'll yeah. punch his ticket right there. Yeah, and he may only get one more chance. Yes, it's true, because I think if the Dodgers don't win it this year, I think there's a chance they blow it up. 
Yeah, that's and what with, I think too. And with the way his velocity's dropped and the way he's, I mean, he's found a way to do it with the, with the lower velocity and changing speeds and his curveball and things like that this year. But I don't know how much he's got left in the tank. I mean, he, to say that is so weird because he's only 31, but he's been yeah, in the league. But, like I said, this is his 12th year. Yeah. All the best pitchers, though, all of them in all all of the history – find a way to deal with a velocity lag late in their life, you mm-hmm. know, at late in their career. And, and those are the true practitioners. Those are the guys that are artists, yeah. you know, and I want to, and, and I think we'll see that from him. Um, and if we can, if we, if he does deliver that, even if they never make another postseason run during his time, mm-hmm. um, if I agree with you, if he puts together a killer postseason this year, which is almost inevitable, you would think, um, and then on top of that, even no matter what his team does from now on, if he can put together some artistry and really show how to make some magic with a lower velocity, mm-hmm. he will go to the Hall of Fame. It will yes. just increase his popularity. That's what CC Sabathia did. You know, he went from lights out high nineties, mid nineties. Now, you know, this is his last year, and and he's not anywhere near that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the dude is a is a practitioner. You know, he's he's an artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's Bartolo Colon be. pitched forever because cool. he was able to do it. That's exactly. That's an even better example. Yeah. So, yep. So I'd like to see Kershaw be able to make a deep postseason run because I I, I do want to see him in the Hall of Fame. But I just don't think he's quite there yet. Mm-mm. Close though. Very close. So okay, before we move on to the next segment, I want to ask you this. What do you think of Major League Baseball announcing t- today or whatever it was yesterday that uh, that sexual enhancement <laughs> drugs are considered performance enhancers and have now been banned because they they'll because you'll pop hot in your test, right? Yeah. So I actually I read that. I thought that was super funny. Uh, so. <clears throat> So what it is is it's those it's those over the counter ones, yeah. The ones like the extends and whatever extends at the gas station, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they had two players who were suspended for using those very those very ones, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it's first off, I think it's hilarious, and I think it goes back to something we talked about in our steroids episodes, where it's like the markers are so close to other, other things because what those two guys, Tim Beckham, I can't remember the other one was off the top of my head, but what they were popped for was just, was like an eighties steroid, right? Yeah. It's like, and my first thought when I saw that was either, okay, either they're thinking this is so old school that they're not going to believe it or (laughs) you dumb, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Those are my first two thoughts. (laughs) But now seeing this, that this chemical compound, whatever is in, in these over-the-counter enhancement pills, quote-unquote, uh, yeah. that there's something in there that mimics that. And I just I was like, oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> just, yeah. That's not the effect that you would think you'd be getting from steroids, but whatever. No, it's true. <laughs> well, and certain performance enhancers, all they do is reallocate where your body pushes the blood like Viagra, that's all it does, right? Is it just at its core, it just moves where your blood collects. And yeah, so it's, it, it's, it was originally a heart medication and that was just a happy yeah. side effect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's funny that I wonder if this stuff works a similar way is, you know, if you take this instead of its intended effect, if you're at the gym or whatever, maybe it gives you a better pump. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Some kind of pump, huh? Yes. <laughs> as soon as I said it, I was like, oh, man. Brad's going to hit me with the phrasing. Phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. On that note, let's go ahead and wrap this up. And we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about our favorite and also our least favorite team names. The designated hitter, the infield fly, a ground rule double, the dropped third strike. 
To some, these seem like strange things. To you, these are just baseball things. Shop the Baseball Things Collection at 9plusus.com. Welcome back, baseball family. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we have kind of a fun topic today that we're going to talk about. We like to do lists around here. Uh, we think it's fun to list things, rank things, rate things, whatever. I don't know. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the best and worst team names because there are definitely some out there that I like and some out there that I do not like. Um, and I feel kind of kind of strong about some of them. I don't know about you, Brig. <laughs> But there's you, some that I'm just. You. I mean, will. I don't know if you've noticed that I have strong opinions. <laughs> never. I would never apply that to you, Brad. <laughs> no, not a, not at all. Kind of an on the fence guy when it comes to baseball. <laughs> you waffler. <laughs> you wet noodle, you. So this is what we're gonna do. Uh, to keep this thing from going on for hours, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just stick to current. Major League Baseball teams. We're going to do our best and our worst team names. Um, we will both be posting to BaseballTogether.com um, a, a, a post that we will go into more depth about uh, past team names and also um, minor league teams. Go a little bit more in depth about those. But for this, for time's sake here, we're just going to stick to current Major League Baseball teams. So... Let's start with our worst. What is your <laughs> worst? What What do you think is the, I guess, the fifth worst? Uh, oh, my gosh. Major League Baseball team name. Fifth worst? Yes. That means I have to pick one that I don't really care about. Because going all the way to five is, has been hard for me. I don't. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know why. I'm, I don't have too many issues with current Major League Baseball team names. I have some, but I don't know that I have five. Let me just throw... Oh, man, I've got some I'm going to be leaving off tonight. I'll tell you that. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, Bradley. Um, Blackjack Brad is in the house. <laughs> okay. Um, well, then my my fifth least favorite is the Giants. Okay. I don't. I just don't get it. It doesn't... I mean, I know they were the New York Giants, and then they moved, and they kept the name. I got it, but it doesn't resonate at all. There's no – see, now I'm setting myself up for for being on the skewer because I don't have backup reasons why, and now I'm going to hang myself later (laughs) by saying I like I I get that without problems. (laughs) I I get that one, though, because I've always thought that one is strange, like – I like it because, like, oh, it's the Giants, but why? There's no reason behind it, right? And we'll get to it eventually at some point when we talk more about where team names come from. That's right. But, but yeah, no, that is kind of a random one. If just like off the cuff and and just kind of in passing, it's kind of a strange one. Yeah, but it's my fifth least favorite. So it's like, meh. I don't really feel that strongly. What about you? What's your fifth least favorite? So, and this is kind of the same thing. It's. And it's mostly just because of fit. It's kind of the same thing. And it kind of pains me just a little bit to say this, but Pirates. Yeah. The, I don't remember going to Disneyland and going on the ride called the Pirates of the Allegheny. No! <laughs> right. Yeah! Right. No, I don't either. <laughs> you know? The Pirates of the, the Allegheny. Pirates should be in Miami or in Tampa Bay or even Atlanta. They should not be in Pittsburgh. I'm sorry. Drop a mic. I agree. <laughs> And if Major League Baseball ever expands to Portland, Portland Pirates would make a ton of sense. Oh, I would. Oh, my God. Historically. Gosh, Rick, I, would, I would be a Portland Pirates fan yesterday if that was a thing. So I don't I don't get I just don't get the Pirates thing. Like, uh, I don't know. Like I've said before, I'm I have a thing for Pirates. I'm all about Pirates. But put it somewhere where it makes sense. Put it in Florida. Put it in Georgia. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Put them in Puerto Rico. I don't care. Whoa. Put them somewhere they make sense. Whoa, Brad. So that's my fifth. Let's go to number four. Okay. My number four um, is, is the Tigers. Okay. 
and it's it's a fit thing. I love the team name. I don't get why they're in Detroit calling themselves Tigers. That's all. It's, and my only problem is that the basketball team is not called the Bears. Hmm. Because then they'd have the Lions, the Tigers, and Bears. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. See? That is where the world has gone wrong. It is. I mean, if that was the case, everything would be right in the world. Just about everything. I mean, it'd solve every problem. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. No. But no, I, I get that. Like, Tigers in Detroit doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It's just like it's such a generic name. Yeah, but it's also uh, so, uh, Tigers. so classic. You think Detroit Tigers. <laughs> it is classic. Like, it doesn't. So maybe I have to recuse myself. I don't know. Yeah, it. I feel like the team names have to have something to do with the location, kind of like I said with the Pirates. Like, I love the team name, but Pirates in Pittsburgh just doesn't make any sense other than alliteration. Yeah. Which uh, I'm all about alliteration, but not in that case. We'll make an exception. Cheese bread, pick a lane. <laughs> I'm all over the road here. <laughs> oh my! I'm swerving. Oh my! No signals, no coasters tonight. We're all over the place. You must be from Atlanta. <laughs> and Shots enough fired. of that. Shots fired. Okay, what's your fourth <laughs> least favorite, Brad? Indians. Yeah. Okay, because I don't feel like <clears throat> I don't feel like you should be using um, a group of people necessarily as a as a as a team name um i i think we've gotten to a point in society where that's not a thing we should be doing right like they got rid of chief wahoo which was fun for a while it was a nice little cartoon caricature but it also was like also incredibly racist right there's a reason they got rid of him um i just because, I mean, you just we just talked about the tigers, right? I mean, I'm going to get a little bit political here for a second. But we just talked about the tigers. It's an animal that we're using as a moniker there. Um, we're using the giants, a fictional a fictional character of some variety that we're using as a character, as a, as a moniker there. I don't feel like we should be using an actual group of people as a moniker and comparing them with a fantasy character or fantasy creature or an animal. Mm. You know? That... that that's something that when I first heard that argument, I was like, Oh, that makes perfect sense. Huh? Like I totally agree with that. And so I, that's why the Indians makes my, makes my, see, I'm a chief Wahoo fan. Yeah. Yeah. I, when they said, when they said, ah, we're moving away from it. I said, you know, okay, that makes sense. I see why they're doing it, Mm -hmm. but I'd still rather have an Indian's hat with chief Wahoo on it. Yeah. And yeah. And like I said, it's, it's like kind of, it's kind of like a fun, cartoony hat but at the same time like the, some of the characteristics of the hat are like stereotypical True. and, and, and offensive to some. yeah i, I agree yeah. with that and 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 this is the one thing about this too that um <clears throat> that i feel like is an exception um so when i was in school i was i was covering a game where our school utah valley was playing the university of utah who's the utes yeah. okay and with all these schools all over the country who have Native American tribes as their monikers changing and everything. Um, I asked one of their sports information directors who was there, I asked her, I said, so is there a chance that you guys are going to end up having to change? She said, no, actually the Ute Nation asked us to keep it because we're the only place in the country or even in the world where they exist. Damn. So the Ute Nation wants University of Utah to keep that that moniker, which I thought was That's interesting. super interesting. Because it kind of gets the word out about the, about the Ute Nation, yeah. right? Uh, I think I think the thing that she said is the only thing that they ask is that we don't use um, the Ute as like the mascot. So they have a hawk. They have a hawk as yeah. the mascot because they don't have somebody dress up as a Ute. Yep, not anymore. And then they were kind of like, you know, that's that's fine. We can we can get rid of that. Do something else. And they had that hawk, which is super cool, by the way. Um, so I mean, I feel like if you're using a group of people as a mascot, you should have permission from that group of people to do that, like specific, like that, like this is why we want you to keep this, mm. you know? But if there, if there's any problem, I feel like then I don't, I don't think that that should be used mm. still. So I'm going to step down off my soapbox and let you go to number three. Jeez, Brad, I feel like you're way more prepared for this conversation than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I just don't like the name. And I wish that they would change it to something fun. Also, that's it. 
I rest my case. case. <laughs> the people's court. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, my third, my third, number three for me and my least favorites is the Oakland Athletics. And oh, the yeah. flipping elephant. Like, somebody <laughs> explain that crap to me. Um, and I'm sure you will in one of your, you know, where the team name come from things, but yeah, but I don't. Care. Yeah, in fact, I'm gonna do that one soon. Yeah, you better, Brad, because I'm curious. Because I'm curious about yeah. that one, actually. Now I am too. I mean, I always have been. <laughs> I love their color scheme. I think it's super cool. But I don't. I just absolutely don't get the name. I think it's dumb, actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it seems like a cop out. Yep. They're athletic. Let's call them the Athletics. Lame. Yep, I get it. That's it. All right, number three for me is the Mets. I man, I must really hate the Mets. Man, you <laughs> rag on the Mets all the time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's our weekly rag on the Mets segment, <laughs> where Brad further alienates himself from most of the most densely populated comp areas in the world. Anyway, why the Mets? So the Brad? Mets. The Mets, because it's just like, I mean, I get it. The Metropolitans, you know, the Metropolitan Museum, whatever. But why name your team after the Metropolitan Museum? It's the Big Apple. I'd rather have them be the Apples. What? You don't believe that. I don't know. (laughs) You take that back right now. (laughs) But it's just such a a weird name. I mean, it's it's like... (laughs) It, it reminds me of that, that episode of Friends where Joey's dating that scientist. She's like, I'd like to go to the Met. And he's like, no, you don't want to go see the Mets. The Mets. Yeah. <laughs> like, people don't go to the New York to see the Mets. They go to the New York to see the Metropolitan Museum. They go to the Met, not yeah. the Mets. Because the Mets yeah, stink. Yeah, they stink. <laughs> Except for Pete Alonzo and Todd Frazier. Except Pete Alonzo and Jacob DeGrom. Oh, yeah, there's that. And Noah Syndergaard. You'd think they'd be winning you more think games. they would be. Given that list just now. <laughs> Yeah, you think they would be. And there are more. That is a short list of a much longer list of very quality ball players. It's true. Uh, it's just an ownership issue. It is. It's definitely an ownership and a GM issue. Yep. Yeah. All right, number two for you, Brig. Uh, number two for me. I can't decide between these two if I'm going to keep them. Like, which one gets number two, Brad? Oh. Between number two and yes. number one. Oh boy. I it's a tie. Okay. It's a tie between so just so just give me one just give me one of them. Oh, okay. Just give me one of them. No particular no particular order and the Tampa Bay Rays. <gasps> That's my number two. Yeah. The Rays. Yeah, F go that, ahead. Geez. Go ahead. You go first. I don't know. You have to edit that out. Because it's stupid. <laughs> it was stupid when it was the devil rays. It's stupid now that it's a bright, fun, sunshiny ray of sun. It's stupid. I agree. See, this this is my thing with this. Is like, okay, you're the Devil Rays, right? Yeah. And they wanted to take Devil off, whatever. Yeah, stupid. But they could have stayed in the same lane as the Devil Rays, and they could have become the Sting Rays instead of a ray of sun. There you go. Because that's dumb. Cause that's dumb. It is dumb. Like, go, go with the nautical theme. Go with the, go with the sea animals. You know, like stick with, stick with the stingrays. Yeah. Agreed. Now. There's no reason to just go with the bright ray of sunshine other than it's always sunny in Florida. But Not whatever. always, man. They have hurricanes just, and stuff. That's true. They do. Yeah, yeah. But no, just go with the stingray. Don't just go with the ray of sunshine. <laughs> Like, if you want to go away from Devil, go Stingrays. It's yep. stupid. Amen. All right, number one for you. Number one for you, worst. The worst. The worst ever is the Washington Nationals. Oh, that's my number one. No way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we picked number ones and number twosies? Yeah, we did. We're winners, bro. <laughs> wow. Jeez, great mind. We did. Okay, for, for the record... We did not talk about no. this at all uh-uh. before we did this. There was no, like, we did not get to, together about this. Yeah, there was no deciding of what, like, talking about this what whatsoever. That is total coincidence that we decided to do two and, and one. And I, and I amazing. randomly picked between one and two because they are tied for me. 
Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. That is just crazy talk. That's crazy. Okay, why for you? It's a cop out. That's too easy. Too easy of a team name. The uh, nation's capital, Nationals. Right. No, like even go you know, with like because they used to senators. Have the senators. That's, what I, senators. that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, like just even the Senators or or the Eagles. Eagles. They have an eagle as a mascot. Go with there the you Eagles. go. Or the Washington Something. House of Congressmen's would be better. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be. But you see what I'm saying? <laughs> well, they wouldn't get. They wouldn't win any games because they couldn't play together. What? Double the politics <laughs> tonight. We will offend f- more people. Just wait. Tonight yes. we will. Yes. But no, it's just it's just a lazy team it's name. Dumb. The and their logo is dumb. Yeah. It looks like Walgreens. Yes, uh, it does. So, it looks like Walgreens, Brad. So, so I coached a few years ago, and I had like I bought it. I wear the Nationals. Bought a National shirt, and somebody's like, "Why are you wearing a Walgreens shirt?" I'm like, the Washington National shirt, man. <laughs> you uncultured swine. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But it does. It looks like the Walgreens W. It does, man, and it is dumb in all the dumb. Yeah, of you the should, dumb. You should have a logo that if somebody isn't incredibly familiar, they should be able to tell the difference between that and a farm. Another corporate store logo. Chain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh, dude, that's hilarious. Okay, so what is your five number five on your most favorite list? Your your mostest favoriteest. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back to those. Oh, let's take a quick break and we will come back and talk about our most as favoritest ones. Yeah. Hey, babe, I'm headed to concessions. Do you want me to grab you something? Yeah, anything, whatever you're getting. Okay, I saw a burger. I'll probably grab that. Mm, no, that doesn't sound good. Okay, I think there's barbecue, probably some nachos. Uh, I don't think I want either of those either. Um, But just get me anything. What do you want? Uh, I saw a hot dog earlier. Okay, I can do that. Well, no. Couples may quarrel, but baseball is for lovers. Shop the Lovers Collection at 9plusus.com. Welcome back, baseball family. Brad is going to talk about his number five mostest favoritest baseball team name. My number five most favoritest baseball team name is the Diamondbacks. Oh yeah, that's a good. I think it's such a good one because it is a good one. That is a team name that I feel like strikes fear into the opponents because when I was down in Arizona for a couple of years, I never saw any Diamondback rattlesnakes, and I considered myself lucky. I knew people down there who did, and uh, I was like eagle eyes for snakes. I'm not kidding you because I don't like snakes. I don't like spiders, and so I was like looking out for snakes because I was legitimately afraid that I was going to step on a snake while I was down there walking around. Like, well, it wouldn't so, be unlikely. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, like I said, there were people who I talked to like, Oh yeah, we had to have a snake removed from our backyard the other day. There's a snake on our front porch. We couldn't leave the house to the fire department came and got it. Excuse me. What? You're so nonchalant about that. That is a freaking yeah. snake on your front porch. Yep. Hello. Yeah. I think that's an awesome team name. Diamondbacks. I agree. I would never live there for that very reason. Yep. Don't do snakes. Don't do yep. that much heat. No snakes. Zero snakes. Oh. I don't care about the heat. Can't do the snakes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, break number five. Uh, number five for me is the Atlanta Braves. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, and and I'm partial to it because, like I said, I live in Braves country now. I've been to SunTrust Park. Mm-hmm. I've been part of a game. And they, man, they have got that crap figured out. Like it is injected into the culture down here. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the chopping during the game with, when you chant and everything, mm-hmm. it's just like, there is nothing like it. And so the fact that it is an adjective and a noun all at the same time is, co- is really cool to me. I really, really like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I think it's a combination and this will recur in my list of favorites, but it's a combination of the, the uniqueness and the, and the fit of the team name and also the culture that it has brought about and the, the embracing of that culture. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's awesome. And before 
I raise any uh, crooked eyebrows on this. The reason I like the Braves, I think it's cool, is because it's like using the Warriors, like something like that, right? Because that's what a, right. that's what a Brave yeah. is, right? So that's why yep. I think that's super cool. Because I think that's a rad aspect of Native American culture to use. I think it's super cool. Yeah, I, like I agree. All right, Brad. Number five. Number four. Number four. I, mean. I am gonna go with. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with the angels. Yes. I like that one a lot, and this is part of the reason I like this. Okay. Uh, be, I mean, I prefer the name the the Anaheim Angels. I really liked even the California Angels, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, it just it's just like so cool to what they've done with the logo the way they make that work they're south of la they're not in la south of la which is the city of angels so if you translate anybody who speaks spanish knows this and this is pretty rudimentary spanish right that los angeles means the angels yeah originally they were the la angels like way back in their inception they were the la angels and that's what they've gone back to. But it's, it's just funny because it's like the angels, angels, right? Yeah. But I, I do think that's like, that's so fitting for a team in that area. I just think it's super cool. Love it. All right, so you're on number three? Yeah. So my number three, okay, everybody sit down. My sit number in. three is the Red Sox. Whoa. Yep. I know. Wow. I know. And I'll tell you why. I've thought a lot about this, and it really is so simple. It comes down to the X in the name. And we learned about that last week on the on the, uh, on the the podcast. What? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it all comes down to the X, and, you know, we learned about that, like you said, last week. So we're, I mean, it just, I love literature, I love writing, and I love culture, and the blending of all those things. Um, and then, and then really, I just don't like s- the Chicago White Sox is the only reason I love the, I'm just kidding, but I do love <laughs> everything about the Red Sox Yankees rivalry. Mm-hmm. And I love hating the, the hate that goes on, which is really just this weird form of love between each other. And it's, uh, you know, cause every hero has to have a villain, right? So, yeah. so it's, it's awesome. And that's why I like the culture. I like everything about it. But the fact that it's so it's so iconic and it's so easy to say, um, and it's just such an integral part of my life as a Yankees fan, you know. Yeah, that's right. That's, like. that's cool. So my third favorite is the Marlins. Okay. Um, I think I think that's such a cool team name. They've always had cool logos because Marlins are it's such an awesome fish. It's such a such a cool trophy fish. Yeah. Um, like. Like the the marlin, the swordfish, the sailfish. There's no other fish in the sea like those. Like there's those three, and then like they're just like they're so cool to look at, right? They're huge. They have that they're big huge. nose, like the pointy nose. A marlin is such a rad fish. I think that's such a cool name, and it's so perfect for Miami. Yeah. Right. And they get the colors so right for Miami too. They did that's, this year. They definitely have gotten the color scheme perfect for for Miami. So I think, I think the Marlins is number three. That's number three for me. Excellent. Love that. Number three for me is the twins. That's a good one. The twins. I, I think they've embraced the twin cities culture and the twin cities identity. And they found a way it was like, this one's perfect because it's just so simple. Mm-hmm. It's so simple. It's so fitting. Um, it tells the whole story without being too indulgent or trying too hard, like the freaking Nationals. Yeah. And I just love it. I think they hit they hit it out of the park. That's to use yeah. the parlance of our times. <laughs> Solid. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good one. I like that. I like that a lot. So my number two team name is the Padres. Um, oh, nice. I think that's I think that's awesome, um, what they've done to embrace the Spanish like the the Spanish and and Mexican culture down in San Diego. I think that's super cool, like incorporating the missions and everything. Um, 
because you think just like oh the fathers oh the fathers i get it right yeah. like the friars yeah so i think that's super cool what they've done there and it's it's uh it's such a cool name and they've done a great job kind of incorporating everything as far as even the color scheme yeah with san, with san diego um i know tiff isn't real high on the on the brown i am <laughs> But I also like the navy blue. I think the navy blue looks cool, and I think it's a, a cool touch with San Diego and the and the ocean and the blue sky and everything. So I think it's cool. I think everything about the Padres, everything they're doing besides not winning games is rad. So yeah, Super. very cool. Uh, my number two is the Mariners. Hey, all right. Hey, yeah. Number two is the Mariners. I it's the same thing, right? The fishing is a huge deal up there, mm-hmm. and they've got. Uh, the color scheme fits perfectly. I know you have some issues with the teal, Brad. Um, no, it's not the teal. It's the uh, it's oh, it's the, the, compass. the compass. Yeah, rose. yeah, compass rose. Anyway, I, I I love what they've done. I I felt connected to them since Griffey was playing, and um, it just makes a lot of sense to me. And, and again, it comes back to telling the story, the whole story, as simply as possible with one word that communicates all of this meaning. Um, and I think they've nailed it. I totally agree with you because that's my number one. I knew it would be. Having grown up in the Northwest, and I mean, I grew up like boating, you know, like mm-hmm. not just like like skiing, but like I learned how to sail growing up. And I've spent time out on Puget Sound, like fishing and things like that, you know. Like I've I've done the nautical thing, and that's like part of why it speaks to me, right? Yeah. The the whole Mariners thing. And I just think it's, I think it's so cool. It's so perfect for Seattle, for the city, right on, right on the water there. And if you sit, uh, this is one thing I love about Seattle. If you sit in the upper deck, the cheap seats, kind of down the first baseline, the way that the stadium is positioned, uh, your view, you you can't get a better view of the city. Mm. If you're just sitting there looking out beyond the left field wall like out of the city. Like it is so perfect. There's a stock photo on a stock photo website I use that that has like I, I was looking through some I, I found it, I showed my wife. I was like, we've like sat in these seats. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh we know this view. I'll post it. Um I'll, yeah, I I'll do. probably post it on Facebook or something because it's fantastic. It is super cool. It's a beautiful city. You can see out across the sound. You can see the ferry boats coming in during the game. Like it's it's amazing. Like they've done everything to just embrace the city, embrace the sound, the Puget sound and just the whole culture with just, like you said, just with the team name, it's super cool. And it, it speaks to me personally so much. I love it. Mm, love it. All right, Brig. Number one, number one, Brig. This is hard. <laughs> it's hard, man. Um, all right, my number one is the Yankees. I knew it. Yeah, I know. I mean, and we're biased to our teams, let's be honest. We are, and that's okay, as long as it's well justified, right? You can't just say, like, if you had just said, well, that's my favorite team, so screw you, right? Like, that would have been stupid, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's not that way for me either. <laughs> right. I, I don't. It wasn't. I, yeah, I don't have this, like, wonderful picture to paint for you about uh growing up sailing and stuff which i loved by the way thanks for sharing that (laughs) i did not know that but what i will tell you is that i love the yankees name for all of the reasons that i love the yankees and it uh, i mean it's iconic and it's classic and you you know everybody knows it and it's it goes uh, goes well with everything i think but uh, really what it comes down to for me is its history I love the history of the Yankees team name. So um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but the Yankees started in 1901. They were actually the Baltimore Orioles. Whoa. Yeah. Now they wanted to play in New York all along, right? Like that's no surprise. There's a big old turf dispute with the New York Giants. Um, And they needed permission for an American League team to play in New York. It was basically what happened. So... Uh, what they do, what they did is they went to Baltimore for a handful of years and they finally made it back into New York and, 
you know, they couldn't, they had to pick a new name. And so the popular song Yankee Doodle Dandy was around uh, back then. And they changed their name in 1913 to the Yankees. That's cool. Yeah. And I, I like that. I also think that it, the, the team name tells the whole story as well. So. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it, it's like what we talked about before. It's it, it feels like the Yankees have been around since the inception of baseball, which obviously isn't true. No. Nope. But there's so much rich history with that team that, that that name just – there's something that rings with it, you know? Yeah. That whether you hate it or you love it, you know what it means. Yeah, it's true, and I love it. Also, it's just – ugh, just makes my heart happy. It's a good one. Solid. Thanks. Okay, I have an honorable mention. Okay, what's your honorable mention? The Brewers. Which which way, good or bad? Good. I love it. I think it's awesome. Um, it's great. I love what they did with the with the logo and the little wheat gray uh thing on there, whatever that stock oh, yeah. or whatever. Um, and have you been to Milwaukee? I have not. Okay, Milwaukee is a cool town. It's like super cool. And they they had two choices. I don't know this. I imagine they had two choices. They're like, <laughs> are we going to do motorcycles or are we going to do beer? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's got to be one or the other. But it's the epicenter of both iconic American, you know, uh, things. Americans love their beer and especially, you know, domestic beer. And then Americans love Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson is huge. They're headquartered out of Milwaukee. And if you get a chance to go to the Harley, Harley Davidson Museum there, the factory museum, you have to do it. You have to have to go. It's super amazing. Um, and I, I like museums, but it's super amazing. So, That's cool. yeah, I just think they nailed it. And between motorcycles and beer, they picked the right one. You know, I like their their logo that looks like the, the baseball glove. I do, too. If you look, if you look close at it, the, the top of it is an M. Yep. And then the part that's like the thumb and the and the palm is a B. Yep. Yeah, I think that's... That's I, why it I looks all it. weird. <laughs> yeah, I love it when teams do that, though. Like when they make the, the letters into a, into an image like that. Yeah. Because I could never do that. So I have a great appreciation for it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Washington State. How that cougar, the Washington State, well, the Washington State cougar, yeah. says WSU. Yeah. Awesome. I hate Washington State, but I think that's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Are you a Huskies fan, or is that is that why? No, I'm a Ducks fan. Oh, you're, you're a Ducks fan. Oh yeah, duh. yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So clo- I grew up closer to Oregon than 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 either of those teams. So that's right. Grew up a Ducks fan. But... Cool. Do you have an honorable mention? I do. Uh, my honorable mention. A lot of these teams are in the in the west because that's mostly the baseball i pay attention to sure um but it's the texas rangers because i think that's cool um because in the history of america right like yeah the wild west you have the texas rangers and you got this team that represents texas who are they going to be who else are they going to be right you know they've got to be the they've got to have the name the texas rangers so I, I I've always agree. thought, I've always thought that was super cool. And when Nolan Ryan pitched for the Rangers, I just thought that is so fitting. Yeah, <laughs> who it's else true. should he be pitching for? It's like I know he pitched the Astros, but just Nolan Ryan in a Rangers uniform just always felt so perfect to me. Yeah, and it still does, still does, because it's, it's just it feels like that's where he belonged because he felt like a Ranger. Yeah. So, well, I and he's from Texas. Awesome. Yeah, he's a big Texan. Big. Do you have any least favorite honorable mentions? Or I guess that would be hard because we had to dig for number five. So, um, For me, it's the Reds. That's what I was going to say. Just because <laughs> I, I feel like just using a color is a cop-out. Yeah. And I know that the Reds have more of a history with their team name. We'll get into that another well, time. Well, they have more of a history of baseball in just, than just about anybody just, else in America. It's true, yeah. They were one of the very first teams in baseball, which I think is super cool. Yeah. And some of the ways that they that they incorporated that into their current logos, like their secondary logos, is awesome with the old school hats and the handlebar mustache on the baseball. And shirts at sleeveless day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Savages. 
because it's so rad. I love it. <laughs> yeah, and so, I mean, I really think the Reds make made losing look like more fun than anybody ever has before this entire year. Yeah, that's absolutely. Like, if you're true. gonna lose, if you're gonna lose, go play for the Reds. Yeah, like because you're gonna have a blast doing it. Yeah, I agree with you. But no, I just I just always thought that a team name shouldn't just be a color. Like I get the St. Louis Blues in the NHL because blues is a kind of music. Yeah. But reds, what's a red other than a red squirt, which is a red cream soda? I don't think that's what they're named after. Uh, I don't think but, so. I think it's a red leg thing is where their team name came yeah, from. Yeah, it is. It is. Which to yeah. us army people means that they're in the artillery. Oh, that's I what, did not know that. Yeah, in the army you call artillerymen are called red legs. That might make sense then. They even wear a red stripe. If you're you're an NCO or an officer, you even wear a red stripe up your dress blue pants instead of a gold braid. They wear a red braid. Oh, wow. That's cool. Red, a red stripe. Yeah. Part of why they're red legs. But anyway, that's like unnecessary history, I guess. But that's the only thing I can associate. Well, that would almost make I sense. Know. I mean, you want your baseball team to be kind of like artillery, wouldn't you? You'd think, right? These days you do. I don't think it's always been that way. No, definitely not back in the 1800s either. Dead, dead ball baseball. Well, I think that's enough for today. Uh, why don't you go ahead and plug it, Brig? Yep, don't forget to jump on the Shop 2 Baseball family. You can go to shop9 com, or you can get to the shop via baseballtogether.com as well. Uh, got a lot of cool stuff in there. Hats and t-shirts and tank tops and baseball tees. Everything from adult to kids, all the way down to a onesies. And uh, we're coming out with some stickers and stuff like that as well. And as we get into the playoffs and the winter months, We'll start releasing uh, hoodies and sweatpants and things like that as well. So be excited. Jump on there. Get yourself something nice. Don't forget 10% of everything we do goes to support the cause. And uh, good talking to you. And if you haven't already, go ahead and email us at support at 9plusus.com. That's 9plusus.com. And let us know if you want to be part of our season contest. Uh, It is a giveaway for a perfect hat. Uh, let us know if you want to be involved in that. And like Brick said, check out baseballtogether.com. It is our website. We are going to be having um, just articles on things that have to do with baseball. Um, baseball experiences. Um, we're going to be trying to get some current event stuff up on there. Just a whole lot of baseball reading. Uh, you can find the podcast there as well if you'd like. Um, and baseball family, we will catch you next week. Mm-hmm.